All right, good afternoon. Six minutes after three o'clock. Uh, how are you? It's the 10th day of the 10th month. It's 10 10s teen, and this is Max World Live, a special edition. I don't know why I'm going to do this today. <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I'm a, you know what? I'm, a, I'm doing this for Frank and Tom. Because you want to make me happy. I did. I came in today and I said, Frank, I'm going to make you happy. And he thought I was going to give him like 50, 60 cents. And I said, no, it's much bigger than that. <laughs> Frank loves to talk about the debates. After the debates, Tom, you obviously... Bob and I, not so much. Well, Bob watched it. He, t- he said he was glad he watched it. Oh, so you too? I wasn't going to watch it. My son came over, so I sat down with him. He wanted to see it. All right. So I just want, from a Christian perspective, I want us to unpack what we saw last night, and does it change, does it alter, does it impact the way we're going to pull the lever on the 8th of November? Isn't it the 8th? Yes. Eight. And so um, I know you've got a, a notes in view, and there's a lot of notes out there all over the place. I got up at uh, almost 4 o'clock this morning. There's a good thing about TV at 4 o'clock in the morning because all they're doing is what they did the night before. And so I saw the debate, and then I saw all the, okay. the whips and, the, and, and uh, Jeb- Jebediah in there. I almost called you Jeremiah, Bullfrog. Uh, Jebediah is going to come up with some clips so we can listen to some of yes. this. But why don't, the, why don't the four of you, and I'll be listening right here, discuss what you felt was the, the outcome of the debate last night. Okay. All right, good, Mac. And I appreciate to being asked to come on a day early. We're, we're trying to get some more, in fact... Uh, I've been in contact today with the head of the Speaker's Bureau for Donald Trump. Uh, he gave us, Ed, last week uh, a yeah. fine, fine show. Uh, Chris, uh, uh, you had to agree that it was one of the better shows that uh, that we've done for a while. I mean, the guy was extremely good. Um, so, well, Who has to agree? Uh, Chris. Chris? Chris. Well, meaning that uh, I, w- I would agree. I don't have to, meaning that I don't give the final approval. Don't read into that too much, Mac. I know that you get upset when people try to usurp your authority and take over <laughs> Mac's world. I, I'm not trying to do that. or No, no one's suggesting that. It, it was Mac's world the whole time. Oh, my. my. It's, right. it's Monday, and I've had this. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. And for whatever oh. reason, uh, we're down, Bob, the webcast one. Okay. Yeah, the All internet. Right. It, Jeb is actually scrambling, scrambling to get that back up so that he can play the clips he, he wanted me to let you know oh, that he's a little okay. bit behind on getting the clips so right, we'll, we'll just have to go from right. memory okay well what i felt like mac was like a lot of christian conservatives that are in support of trump uh that we had missed a lot of opportunities in the first debate we had over 80 million viewers in that first debate uh i hear there was maybe a 20 percent drop off last night but keep off missed opportunities i was sitting there yelling at the set i was saying say this say that and my wife says you know calm down um but the missed opportunities i think were made up uh for last night trump demonstrated uh, guys trump comes in under siege like i don't remember a presidential candidate in october being under siege in my lifetime yeah, he, was, uh, he was being vilified from all areas, not just the liberal media, which is nothing but an extension of the Clinton, uh, you know, team. Uh, but he was also getting it from his own guys. They were threatening to leave him. They were threatening to get out. You know, yeah. we want another person in there. He was on the defensive from everywhere. And what does he do, guys? He comes in there, advertises to the media to come in to uh, uh, an event. He's going to do a uh, uh, press conference, okay? A press conference, and the media walks in there, and they are ambushed. They are shocked to see Trump sitting there with four of the women that are charging Bill Clinton with sexual immorality. Well, the fourth actually was said she was abused at the age of 12 by Hillary Clinton and then laughed at on two separate occasions later in interviews about her situation and getting a rapist off. So they are ambushed. Bush, they are shocked to find out this is going on. The women come into this stage. Here he's still under assault, and he holds up. I, I could not 
believe he held up as well as he did. He stayed on the offensive. He was not this distracted individual that you throw up a shiny object or a let a squirrel run out in front of him and he, he runs after it. He was focused. He was on the attack. He was on there. And almost everything that I wanted him to get to, with, the, with a couple of exceptions, which we've got one more debate coming, I want to get into the Clinton crime family a little bit more. And I also want to hit one more time on the Benghazi uh, issue, which he alluded to a few times. But again, the lives lost uh, could have been hammered a little bit more. Frank, what were your opinions on that? Well, uh, obviously, everybody got blindsided on Friday by a, a mm. video release of uh, some guy named Billy Bush and some comments that Trump made apparently in 2005. Now, we've all known, and I, no one is under any illusion, Trump himself has said, I'm not a choir boy. Right. I'm not voting for Trump for Sabbath school leader, clearly. But the timing of this stunk because it absolutely coincided. It was a Friday, which always happens whenever they want to drop something. They drop it on Friday. And they scram because you don't have your regular uh, commentators and stuff. They scramble to get stuff done, and you know it, it and it and it absolutely coincided with the WikiLeaks drop. Stuff in that WikiLeaks drop that has said what people has been saying all along. Strobe Talbot has always been an advocate for her. For for he is not a citizen of 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 a country. He's a citizen of a world. He advocates for open border policies, and it absolutely hammered her in an absolute bald faced lie that she's going to stop people from coming in this country. Right, because she advocates for open borders and said that she had a personal. She has to have a public stance. And a private stance. Oh, so that she's two faces. Oh, yeah, that, that was that treatment. Uh, that's broad. And she said she was watching a movie about Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> it wasn't, <laughs> that it, 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 I wasn't talking about that. You know, of course, she just deflected. And what was really funny, the WikiLeaks comment, she got pushed on that by the by the moderators. Uh, immediately after they pushed Donald Trump on another question, I don't remember what the, his question was, but he started to do what politicians do, deviate a little bit. They pushed him back. No, answer the question. He deviates. No, answer the question. Then they go to Hillary about this WikiLeaks thing, and she just walks away. She says, oh, no, no, we can't prove oh, any of that I, stuff. Yeah. None of that's true. And well, she man, just moves on to talk about Russia well, and when, how much Trump loves uh, Vat, you know, Putin and all this stuff. And they don't they don't stop her at all. I mean, no. it was another example. I, even for me, the WikiLeaks thing just got completely. But Trump had one of his better impromptu lines in what you, regard to what you're saying there, Chris. He said, uh, and, and what, what I wanted him to do was do a, an imitation of uh, Lloyd Benson during the uh, debate between he and Quayle. But unfortunately, the younger viewers wouldn't have known what he was doing. But he should have said, I knew Abe Lincoln. <laughs> Abe Lincoln was a friend of mine. And Hillary, you know Honest Abe. That would have been great. Well, she I, totally... I did pick up on the illusion, though. Yeah. She <laughs> totally walked away without... She left everything on on the table, the allegations about Bill's sexual uh, escapades, the email stuff, by simply saying, well, I'm going to take Michelle Obama's advice that when they go low, you go high. Right, she didn't acknowledge nothing. No. Let's uh, let's listen to the exchange about uh, the Abe Lincoln debate, or I mean, about <laughs> Abe Lincoln. Go ahead and roll that footage. Beautiful being footage. Give it a sec. Mr. Trump. Trump. Because it's so ridiculous. He's <laughs> at this point. Yeah, yeah. all right, go ahead. Me. No, I meant you guys. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Uh, you, you let us know. We've we got to work on that audio a little bit. But now she's recording a total lie. Not to all her friends. Uh, but uh, one of the things that Trump did consistently was he didn't leave a lot of hanging curveballs. The opportunities that he left out, maybe I don't think he did first debate, which was a doggone shame because Ronald Reagan and every other person that ever lined up in recent times, going back to the Kennedy-Nixon debates and before, has done preparation. I think he thought... Um, uh, uh, 
def- deficit of, of his judgment, perhaps, that he could just step out there and wing it, be himself. He didn't want to be staged or prepared. I think he found out he needed to be better prepared, and I think he did a lot more preparation this time around. Now, he didn't lay around for a week like Hillary does and rest and, and do nothing but practice on the debate, but he did do more preparation, and I think it was evident in a more focused presentation. He was on the attack. Uh, he And he took on the moderators, guys. One thing that, uh, yes. you remember Mitt yeah. Romney back in 2012? Candy he let Crowley. Candy Crowley get right in the middle of, of the debate. Mac, you remember that moment? Yeah. Um, and Mitt Romney was too much of a gentleman to correct her. Uh, we had Mike Pence on the vice presidential thing. Uh, he let himself get interrupted 70 times. Uh, by Kane, the moderators continued. When the Kane wasn't up to it, they stepped in and interrupted every time he started to make a good point because he had a lot of good points, and he was always too polite or whatever it is to set them straight. Not Trump. He steps right back onto the moderators, and he's critical, and finally he got them to be more objective and fair and interrupt Hillary. All right, we've got Tom Coates, we've got Chris, we've got Frank, we've got Bob Montserrat, the cat in the hat, watching the chat and the Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0983. And remember, first call bail bonds reminds you not to text and drive. So does Max World, here live on 99.3 FM. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and you know, it's fun it is, to get a uh, new one. It's Who just, can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck Trump paying off bad credit card debt. We we'll put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 21 minutes after 3 o'clock, 321 in the afternoon. Want to remind you, want to remind you, if you are a homeowner, now is an excellent time to try to sell your home. It's a seller's market. 
If you know what that means, it means that there are fewer homes on the market than there are buyers. And so the price of the home goes up. Now, if you're buying, that might not be a good idea. But if you've got a professional real estate agent that you're working with, like uh, Seth Walker, then we know, we know that if you're buying, uh, he's not going to let you pay too much for a property. It won't. It, he's not going to let you pay over uh, appraised value. You can't get a loan if it's over appraised value. The process is very slow right now on all kinds of uh, title examinations and stuff like that. It's taking longer. So I would just remind you that if you are thinking about buying or selling property, I would strongly encourage you to use a professional realtor like Seth Walker. 515-577-3728. Seth Walker. All right. Um, Jebediah believes he may have the um, probably the juiciest <laughs> One of them. cut from uh, last night's debate. Why don't you go ahead and try to run that, Jebediah, and we'll see if we've got enough bandwidth to do that today. You know, Oh, it is, uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. I mean, wait a minute. Hold on. Just stop. That wasn't that, wasn't that the zinger of the night? That was one yeah. of them. I was on my feet cheering yeah. and throwing my fist pumps yeah. going, yeah! Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I mean, uh, Mac, let, let, let's let's point out for your listeners that may have not considered it because good conservative folks live their lives in a certain way. For the I, most part, you're judging somebody that I don't no, know about. No, I mean, just in general. I know. I'm just kidding. Um, just kidding. And they have they they don't maybe always consciously understand, but they know at some levels that their very belief system, the system that of Christianity this country was founded on centuries ago has been under assault for decades by the secular media by hollywood uh by the left-wing politicians and all of their emissaries can i can i just put them all in one bunch people going to hell yeah and, and they have repudiated <laughs> wait a minute hold on roll off no no we, we don't get to make that judgment oh, okay all right well he was being somewhat facetious but but on the other hand perhaps not but they have repudiated to our traditional values and morality for decades mac we have been under assault by these people and if it's not done through the airwaves it's done through the courts that's why this supreme court nomination that comes up i think was one of the pivotal moments last night but what we're seeing is rife hypocrisy on all levels can you imagine a woman in this country that is less able to get up in good conscience of any kind of conscience and throw stones at donald trump for something he said 11 years ago with billy bush and has protected and been the bimbo eruption chiefess for decades with her husband uh, in his either voluntary or involuntary activities with women. Uh, there, uh, yes, Frank. For political gain. For political gain. For political and financial gain. Right. Uh, but uh, I want to put that last little clip into perspective. What that was is Donald Trump turned right to Hillary and shook his finger at her and said, if I voted, he said, I'm going to tell you what, he said, I wasn't going to say this, yep. but he said, I'm going to. He said, yep. if I am voted president, he says, I'm going to appoint a special prosecutor to investigate your alleged crimes. And Hillary looked a little stunned by that comment, and the, and the audience erupted in cheers. Well, and those of us that have got a few years on us remember Ken Starr and the independent prosecutor that took out after her husband, qualified yeah. as a horrible human being when he was trying to do his job. Now, we know the Justice Department is incapable of going after Hillary. It doesn't matter what's laid out. It came out last week, guys, that they not only granted immunity to some of her staffers, they also then encouraged and directed them to destroy the computers that would have revo revealed the evidence. They don't want to go anywhere near that. So a special prosecutor is needed in this case. And Tom, of course you will remember, every time somebody said that, we had to be reminded how much the Ken Starr investigation cost, and they only come up with something oh, on sex. Yes, you yes. know, that Puritan sexual interest of you Christians. Well, talking about cost, I thought it was a, it was a masterful moment when he said, I put a hundred million dollars before 
this money and my own money into this campaign. Right. Hillary, you and Bill have made over two hundred million dollars. Two hundred fifty. Yeah, two hundred and fifty. Whatever. I mean, there's different numbers out there, but you've made an awful lot of money on the backs of, in essence, the politics for entire lives. Uh, why don't you put thirty million of your own money into this campaign? I thought that was another masterful stroke. Why, you know, you're so concerned over saving the poor taxpayers' money. Put thirty million of your own money into your own campaign. Put a little skin in the game, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I thought a couple of the really good moments is when he attacked her and smacked her upside the head for us broadcasting three or four weeks in advance. Why we're going to Mosul, which spurred a uh, to take back Mosul, which spurred a debate between Martha Raddatz and Donald Trump. She was arguing with Donald Trump and debating Donald Trump. Now, when have you ever seen a moderator go into about a three-minute exchange with a candidate? Candy Crowley moment once again. We mentioned in the first segment, this was the opportunity that, again, a, a, a less outgoing personality like uh, Mitt Romney, well, like Mitt, uh, we had him on the show a number of times, Mac, uh, even Mike Pence did not actively want to argue and engage with the moderators, but this was a time that he did, and he he pushed back, and finally, Martha Raddatz, who I, I don't know what her credentials are to be a moderator here, um, uh, visually or, or verbally or mentally or anything else, but she was up there, and, uh, and he finally got her to the point where she backed off and went away. But unlike, again, the Mitt Romney, who just rolled over incorrectly because Candy Crowley fact-checked him improperly on, on his issue with Obama and turned those debates around. Uh, he He's not putting up with it. And he said, you know, you let her go a minute over her time and say nothing, and me, seconds after my two minutes are up, you start, you know, interrupting me. Well, and then the other thing that was pertinent to the Abe Lincoln, which was absolutely not choreographed one bit because Hillary brought the Abe Lincoln thing up. So She he, had been practiced on he that. He turned that on a dime. But she had been practiced on that Abe Lincoln thing. And he and, and it brought up the fact that he's she she got caught by the WikiLeaks having two faces because she's got a public stance yes. and a private Good stance. Point, and Frank. Trump nailed her on being two faced. And what's the Bible say about being of double mind? <laughs> Absolutely that, condemns double mindedness. Is that what that means? Is double minded is two faced? Basically, yes. Hmm. Okay, I never knew that. Chris is shaking his head. He's kind yeah, of fact-checking that one in his own yeah. mind. <laughs> the Bible fact-checker. <laughs> There's a couple different ways you could go with that. But anyway, no, that's fine. Okay. I will let it stand. Okay. Why, thank you, Judge Roloff. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's try to play this uh, piece where Hillary Clinton says, how, what, she, what was the question? What do you respect about your opponent? What or what can do you, you say like? nice about the, yeah. each, guy, each opponent? Well, I, I certainly will because uh, I think that's a, a very fair and important question. Look, I respect his children. His children are incredibly able what was that and crowd devoted, reaction? and I think that says a lot about Donald. I don't agree with nearly anything else he says or does, but I do respect that, and I think that is something uh, that as a mother and a grandmother is very important to me. All right. Well, the uh, the drinking game I said would have been uh, for the young people at the bars would have been every time she mentioned family and kids, Mac, uh, you'd have you'd not been able to walk away from the bar. How many times did she mention she's all in there for kids and 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 uh, like the woman said that was raped at age twelve? Uh, I don't think so. I think some of Trump's best lines though is he reiterated over and over and over. It's just talk. It's just words. You've been on the job thirty years and you haven't got it done. Let's talk about let's talk about that because they mentioned and Democrats always do this. Democrats always talk about taxes and they always talk about we're gonna take the money from those rich guys. We're gonna tax those rich people. And one of the things that I thought was really impressive uh, last night was Donald Trump saying, Yeah. I take deductions. I take lots of deductions. So do a lot of other rich people. You know, and he named them by names. And he said, you've had lots of opportunities to change this, again, pointing to Frank's point, and you've done nothing about it, and you're not going to do anything about it because you want those people to continue to, to contribute to your exactly. uh, campaigns, continue to give you money. And I think what what's really sad about this is the American people get upset 
when they hear uh, a, a rich person like Donald Trump or, or, or these other folks not paying, quote, their fair share of taxes, and then they, they believe this delusional lie that the Democrats are going to tax the rich. They're not tax the rich. They're not interested in taxing the rich. The only people who get, t- when taxes go up, the middle class always gets hosed. That's no, just the right. way it goes. You're right. And he mentioned uh, Warren Buffett and George Soros. George Soros, right. an absolute dis. Human being went back to uh, he was a Jew in Germany and he had helped the Nazis out and put the uh, some of his fellow uh, Jews in the concentration camps. Warren Buffett, who claims that he wants more taxes on the wealthy, he doesn't want to pay a higher rate than his secretary. Uh, and yet, do you know, guys, that he's in an ongoing dispute with the IRS on a billion dollars in back taxes? If he were that concerned about the little guy, wouldn't he hurry up and write that billion well, dollar check? Let me. No, t- he's in an ongoing dispute with the IRS saying, no, I don't owe that billion dollars you say I do. Well, let me give you a little juicy tidbit about the good old uh, environmental saving the planet George Soros. He's got Ed Fallon snowed that, uh, you know, oh, we just can't have this fossil fuel and this global warming no, being Ed, used. Uh, Ed's on the payroll, the, but the, go the, ahead. The fact is, is that George Soros owns the railroads that would pump the oil on, on, on tanker cars out of Canada and he wants it on the tankers instead of a pipeline. So does Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's got interest on in the that, same well, Pardon railroad. me, that's what Warren I meant, Buffett. Warren Buffett. I didn't I know did. about George Soros, but no, I know no, that I, Warren Buffett's got it. Sorry, I misspoke. I meant Warren Buffett. No, but, and, and there were, obviously, the big money, I, again, uh, the big money on Wall Street and the banks are backing Hillary Clinton. They want you to believe, Mac, that Trump is the uh, repository for wealthy in this country. Why, if that's the case, does the vast majority of Wall Street money and the bank money go towards Hillary? That's why she's got all the money to spend on these stupid ads. And did you notice she didn't deny what was brought up about the WikiLeaks? No. Right. I mean, they were they were trying to run interference for her and say, well, we don't know if this stuff is valid or not. But when they brought up the point about the WikiLeaks and her saying about open borders and such, she didn't deny and she answered the question. Well, you got to have a public stance and a private stance. All right. You were sitting in your chair last night. You were watching these debates. You might not. And maybe as I can, I'd like to hear that comment, too. I really would. Mac, why is this important to us? Let, let, let's talk about Jesus for a minute. He's in charge. This is his kingdom, not ours. Does it really matter who makes president? Does it really impact anything other than... The next four years, the next eight years, now some would some would argue that the Supreme Court is going to be greatly damaged if Hillary Clinton gets in. But it's your voice I want to hear, 515-244-0077, or you can give me a call at the, or I'm sorry, you can uh, give us a, a text at the Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0993. And remember, first call bail bonds reminds you not to text and drive. I don't know if I've told you this lately, but I love my job. So thanks for listening. It's a great job, and I couldn't do it without you. Right here on The Truth. Mm Mm-hmm. 99.3. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed. That's our best 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. 
to get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24 seven. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at three in the morning. Answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24 hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 338, 22 minutes before the top of the hour. Top of the hour, Salem Radio. And then this conversation continues. Oh, no, not more Frank and Tom. Yes. I can remember... I can remember the day. Can I, can I say this? Yes. I, well, of course you want it said. Yeah. I can remember when Frank's first started here. And what did you say to me about it? Oh, I don't remember the exact comment. Pain in the rear. I think it was something like toss him over the skywalk. <laughs> <laughs> can we climb to the top of the hub tower and see if he'll bounce? I grew on Tom. Yeah. I don't know. Like either. fungus. Something. But now you two get along just oh, like a couple of brothers. Absolutely. Will it be this way after November 8th? I think so. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Wow. <laughs> hey, you know, he's got openings for uh, uh, credit counselors or secretaries <laughs> or cleaning. You could go hang out at his shop all day. <laughs> Boy, then you change your tune. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, familiarity, familiarity breeds contempt. Is that what you're going to say, Mac? He, he spends more time in the office than I do. <laughs> it's really scary. All right, so... um. We've got a couple of texts from the Service Legends Truth Text Line at 515-809-0993. And remember, first call bail bonds reminds you not to text and drive. I love that. I love those guys as a client. You know, if you think for one moment that somebody who loves Jesus can't be accused of doing something wrong, that's when you need a bail bondsman. You, 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 you get this idea in your head that bail bondsmen are only used for guilty people. No, they're used for people who are accused of a crime. And in America, when you are accused of a crime, many times you are charged with it. And then there's a process, and with judges and grand juries and things like that, look, you know, the, the uh, uh, attorney, uh, who am I trying to think of? Sarcone's office, the, mm, uh, county the public prosecutor, county prosecutor. They look at all the facts, and many times those charges are not filed. Yeah. But that doesn't mean they don't come to your door and put you in handcuffs and take you downtown to the Polk County Day Spa. So, don't laugh when a brother in Christ wants to support the radio station and his business is a bail bonds business. Because he's here to help us, to help you and I. And besides that, what about kids and grandkids? Yeah. What about friends, neighbors? How about this as a Christian witness? Your neighbor who laughs at your relationship with Jesus who sits out on the front porch drinking beer, smoking cigarettes while you're in church and likes to mock you about it, one day his wife or his spouse or her spouse comes running over to your house in tears. My husband was just arrested. I can't believe that he did, but he, I, and I don't know how to get him out of jail. You'll know that you can call 
first call bail bonds at 973-4773 and they will help you out so i'm i'm, I'm very pleased to have mac uh you mentioned grandkids and remind me of a story this weekend your grandkids get arrested again for piling on you <laughs> yeah. well i i had them out as some of my grandkids out and i was demonstrating the change of the seasons and i had my uh my spray and i went from killing wasp and hornets to uh, killing what i've always called my life democrat bugs now, some people call them box elders, and I was explaining to the grandkids, these are Democrat bugs, and how you kill them with, with a little soap and water, and it's it's rather easy, and it's kind of fun, and my wife got after me for uh, insulting, uh, <laughs> I said, now, bugs? am I insulting the, the Democrats, or am I insulting the bugs? The bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, congratulations on the birth of your 40-year-old daughter today, is that right? Today's her birthday? You're exactly right. I follow those things on Facebook. Did you see that picture she posted? No, no, it's not on Facebook. I have oh. it ingrained into my heart. Okay. <laughs> that your first child was born 40 years ago today on the 10th t- day of October. Yep. Got a 40-year-old daughter. Isn't that something, Mac? Oh, I, I don't I, feel much past 40 myself. I've had a 40-year-old daughter for two or three years. So, yeah. I'll tell you what will get you. Wait till your grandkid graduates from high school and then moves out of the house. That'll get you. When you're when you're when your oldest grand I had my oldest grandchild graduate from high school and move out of the house. Mm. And then moved in with grandma. No. Oh. And I. So, you know, that happens. Well that, yeah. All right, let's go to the uh, let's go to the service legends truth talk text line at five one five eight oh nine zero nine nine three. Remember, first call bail bonds reminds you not to text and drive. Robert, go for it. Okay. Both candidates were sickening last night. I'm not voting for either one. But I don't know what I'm going to do. That's number one. Okay. Number two, the Democrats had their ch- their chance to tax the rich a few years ago when they held the presidency, House, and supermajority of the Senate and didn't do it. That's right. Two, I love hearing people defend Trump, but frankly, I'm embarrassed to be voting for him. I'm going to. And don't get me wrong, <laughs> I'd be embarrassed about Hillary. I'm afraid it doesn't look good for Trump, though. Well, and those are all... Interesting comment. I got one more. Okay. Um, it's uh, everyone wants to talk about Trump and his faith, but there is no mention of Hillary's. No discussion at all. Except I saw a commercial the other day of the 99 year old man. He'd been through all these things, and I, I, I'm a man of faith. And he said, "I'm going to vote for Hillary because I think she's a person of faith too." Um, faith as defined by how I can work the system around <laughs> to line my own pockets and Bill's pockets and manipulate the system. Now, she's got faith in that. But as far as anybody in this room would consider faith, I'd have to say no. Picking up on something that texter said, Tom, let me ask you, do you think people out there who are embarrassed for whatever reason – could be blacks in the black community to say they're voting for Trump. Do you think this is underestimated in the polls? Now, I think a lot of things are underestimated in the polls. I think one of the things that cinched in a lot of Christian conservatives, because Mac punched, touched on it earlier, um, the aspect and the impact of Christians in America. Uh, you notice Hillary always wants to hammer on certain of the social issues and get Supreme Court justices that are going to, in essence, give us more social in engineering uh she said well trump wants people that in there would overturn roe v wade uh and and trump emphasized his desire to get somebody like scalia that respects the constitution and in there and that hammers home one of the biggest talking points that we've talked about for a long time is that even if you don't like donald trump personally or think or ass or whatever you got to look at your own family and if you want to have an opportunity to enjoy the fruits that this country has to offer since the founding let's get a supreme court that respects the rule of law and the constitution and i think he did a pretty good job of that did you hear uh hillary's qualifications for for supreme court she has a four-part litmus test <laughs> uh one they have to overturn citizens united Two, they have to support global warming. Three, they have to support Roe v. Wade. And four, they have to keep homosexual marriage uh, safe. Explain Citizens United for the audience. Well, Citizens United is is that, uh, I mean, I can't give you the technical explanation, but it's the idea that corporations are people and that they can, that that it's it's speech. And corporations can, can donate 
as much money as they want to a political ca- candidate as long as supposedly, quote, it's uh, uh, the public. word. Um, Is it public? Public. It's, it's, it's publicly uh, disclosed. Disclosed, yes. Publicly Bingo. Disclosed. Who do you think has gotten the bigger share of the corporate money? <laughs> Again, the hypocrisy of this woman. Who do you think is, has pulled in the corporate money? Tom. In the first presidential inauguration of Barack Obama, 600 private jets flew into his inauguration. Who do you think flew in on those uh, private jets? Exactly Corporate right. Wall Street types. And she said he's police corporate Wall Street. We got, we got ones like EpiPen. You know, I mean, we got the CEO is the daughter of, of U.S. Senator Democrat Joe Manchin, and they gave almost a quarter of a million dollars to the Clinton. Foundation. Now that we were hearing about EpiPen talked about by the is again the crony capitalism that exists in this country, and most of it flows to the Democrats. But Tom, explain to me what the minutia difference is between the Citizens United and the union support and the cozy relationship between unions and the Democrats. Uh, and How a, is that? Because because what they're, what they're saying is corporations aren't private individuals and they're not guaranteed speech, but yet unions can donate all the money they want to, to Democrats in the name of free speech. Well, and especially, Frank, the one union that's been growing in this country has been the public employees union. Absolutely. Private unions have been shrinking because private jobs have been going away in this country. Okay, you fraternity brothers, just sit back and wait. We'll be back in two minutes for the Tom and Frank Show right here live on Max World. I'm sorry, on Tom and Frank's World. I love you guys. Coming back live on the... From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop Island? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me and bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 3.50, 3.50, 10 minutes before the top, top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News. Remember that the folks at the Family Leader are asking you to focus for 40. We are now um, 40, 39, 38, 37, less 7 is 28, 4, 5, 27, 27, 24. Well, anyway, we're like 20-some days away from the election. And every day at if714.com, that's if714.com, every day at 714 in the morning and 714 in the afternoon, they're going to give you a Bible verse that talks about leadership, that talks about the government, a biblical government with leadership. So why not tune in? It's free of charge. www.if714.com. And join the family leader for Focus 440. 
All right, we have uh, the Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0993. And remember that you call first call bail bonds if you need help. May not be you, maybe your grandson or granddaughter, maybe your neighbor, maybe your chance to witness. The wife comes over and says, my husband's been arrested and I have no idea what's going on. I'm frantic. This has never happened to us before. And you've been trying to teach him Jesus. And you say, hey, I've got somebody. First call bail bonds. 973-4773. That's the number. You know, it's one of those funny things. You don't ever need that number until you need that number. Yeah. First call bail bonds. Their number, it's good to write down. 973-4773. Because when you need it, you need it right away. Yeah, you need it right away. All right. Mac, the uh, two, two illustrations of the media trying to rig the deck, just like the moderators. One was that they had put out reports that Jeff Sessions and others had been running from Trump and demanding he step down. Um, but tr- that he was supposedly speaking out against Donald Trump. He didn't even attend, and he continued to affirm his support for Donald Trump. There was also a, an illustration last night where CNN was caught trying to coach the people in their uh, in their audience uh, that were supposed to be objective, and they were caught coaching them on what to say in the aftermath of this debate. Now, I will tell you this, uh, the liberals... I won't mention the man's name, but he's a, a top uh, person in the Iowa Democratic Party. He likes to send me things about how the traditional media is turning away from Trump and towards Hillary. And I say, I understand the traditional uh, establishment is, feels very threatened by Trump. Like they weren't for her all along? Yeah. Well, m- may the Republicans. See, some of the Republicans, uh, some of the conservative media that are part of the establishment, they have been turning away from Trump because they think he threatens their position. But you guys know uh, that um, uh, Frank Luntz is the guy that conducts these focus groups. I think Frank is very fair. He's been in Iowa different times. Mac, he was up at the uh, event we went to in Ames uh, this last year with Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah, and, he, and, and he's, he, he's real good. But I've got a comment about him in just a minute. You okay, guys go. Well, I don't want to spoil your comment. All right. Um, anyway, he had a group of undecided St. Louis voters in his group last night. Uh, apparently, as their leanings were, were calculated, they were evenly split between the two candidates. Guess how they voted after the debate? They went, the, the numbers increased. 18 to 4 in favor of Trump post-debate. They were evenly split before. So what I'm saying is, as the media today tries to spin, ladies and gentlemen, you to tell you how Trump He's a reprobate. He's got no chance. I'm telling you that minds were changed. This gentleman that I'm talking about said, oh, not a game changer. Nobody's minds were changed. Obviously, with Frank Luntz's focus group, it demonstrates that a lot of people that are sitting on the fence for one reason or another were shifted over to Donald Trump. It was a big victory for him last night. Yes, Frank. But do you does the hypocrisy smack of Hillary Clinton Covering for political gain, the serial groper, harasser, and potential rapist that her husband was, and that guy's basically had a medal pinned on him by the left. He's a rock star. He's a money-raising hound. And yet, as long as you support Roe v. Wade... All those things are excused. But Podesta's leaked emails show that there's a real fear within the Clinton organization of Bill Clinton. His sexual exploits, they say, get him off the trail. He's a loose cannon, and he's a potentially our biggest liability. And that brought up what he said about Obamacare being some crazy thing, the crazy which is thing. shooting themselves in the foot. The problem is that the answer to that from the left is we need single-payer government-controlled health care. Yes, Mac, you were going to give us a story. What? Tom, thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Great at, transition, at Tom. At this point in the program. <laughs> I, I want you to know how much I appreciate you and Frank and, and Chris for, for letting these fine men come on and, and, and take over my show once again. You, you, you I don't know, the, the closeness I feel to you is just overwhelming. <laughs> okay, Mac. Hey, Bob, let's go. Well, you were um, going to give a story about Frank Luntz. I, I don't know, you, you know... You and I have been buddies for a long time. We've been through, what, three elections now, maybe mm-hmm. four together. Mm-hmm. And you know how passionate I've always been about this stuff. In fact, I get to the point, I mean, at, by the time the caucuses were over, I, I, I was sick almost for all the stuff. 
But Jesus is taking me down a different path this year. And I, I'm, I'm just, I, I, don't cons- I don't care as much because I, I, I don't see that as the prize that we all should aim for. And I'm not criticizing you at all. Frank, I'm criticizing, but not you at all. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I was disappointed by Frank Luntz's group last night. Okay. I sat there and watched that and went, what a sham. Mm. I mean, this is a CNN type of thing. Fox has got these people there, and oh yeah, we're about we're about evenly split, Trump and Clinton, and, and I don't believe that. A and B, I think it was just too easy that all of them, except what four, decided they were now going to vote for Trump. Here's the interesting thing: I don't know if you watched the actual comments, but everybody was really good on Trump until the question about women came up uh-huh. and how he treated women, and all of a sudden. Several of the women, I'm, this is not being, I'm not, I'm, I'm on the girl's side on this. All of a sudden now, they were not so happy with Donald Trump after the comments that he made in that locker room okay. 15 years ago, whatever Did it was. any of them voice, and I didn't watch the Frank Luntz uh, interchange, so you can, you can educate me. Did any of them evidence any concern over the activities of Bill Clinton and the women that were in the audience that all were first-hand testimony back to the actions of bill clinton and hillary right right no i know i got that i did, saw did, that. did they did they evidence any concern over that um like i said i was kind of watching and listening with maybe some rose-colored glasses on today because i found because I, what i did is i watched i was up stupid early this morning i was up at like three in the morning today and just couldn't sleep and so i watched like an hour of, of, of fox and then I went over and watched an hour of CNN. And I, I was kind of sickened to my stomach by both of them. And the Frank Luntz thing was the thing that really sent me over. Well, I'm getting tired of Megyn Kelly. I'll tell you guys that yes, right now. I, I'm, I'm, if, if I could have easily made a comment to Fox News last night, I tried, I would have said, get rid of Megyn Kelly. I'm really getting sick of her. All right. So let's take a break. We're coming back. Uh, Heidi and the Ant are coloring, so we need to be really good next hour. And so we're going to continue to talk about this. But it's your voice I want to hear. 515-244-0077. It's your voice I want to hear live in Max's world. Uh, I'm sorry, Tom and Frank's world. (laughs) 